Right, so this week we're going to um, get take a look at solving triangles again. Um, whenever we solve a triangle, there's always three things you're going to have to find. Okay? And there's always three things that you will be given. Okay? The difference um, this week is that the triangles we solve, which you guys already saw, are not going to have a 90. Okay. If you have a triangle where none of the angles are 90, um, in general, that's just called an oblique triangle. Oblique triangle. And there's two types of oblique triangles you can have. You can have a triangle where all the angles are less than 90. Anybody know the name of a triangle where all the angles are smaller than 90? Yeah, it's an acute triangle. Or how about if you had one angle bigger than 90? That's obtuse. Um, how come I said one angle bigger than 90? Why can't you have two angles bigger than 90? Right. If you had two angles bigger than 90, it would already add up to more than 180. Right. When we sketch things this week, we're not going to be sketching to scale. Right. We're going to have a, just a general diagram. Pretty much every problem I do, that's how I sketch my triangle. Right. So again, it's not, not drawn to scale. And the diagram we're going to draw, I'm about to show you, we have to label all three sides and all three angles. Um, does anybody remember the letters we normally use for the sides of a triangle? Yeah, A, B, and C. Okay. So we're still going to use A, B, and C for the sides. Um, and what about the angle that was across from A? Okay, we gave it a, um, a Greek letter. Anybody remember the Greek letter that was across from A? A, alpha, yep. And how about the Greek letter that was across from B, beta. So we're going to set it up pretty much like that. Okay. My sides are A, B, C. A is across from alpha. B has to be opposite beta. C, okay, I labeled that as my third side. And now I have to give a new Greek letter because the angle across from C isn't the same as it was last week. Okay. What did we say last week? Um, the angle was always across from C. It was always 90. Okay, so you didn't have to name it. Okay. That's how we're going to name it this week. Does anybody know the name of that Greek letter? Draw it a little bigger. That's um, gamma. So we use all English letters for the sides, all Greek letters for our angles. Um, why, not, um, why not just use capital letters for like the angles and lowercase letters for the sides? That's how some books do it. <coughs> what, could be, uh, what could be confusing with that? The C's. Yeah, the C's could look the same, capital C, lowercase c. Okay. And if you're talking to me and you ask me, well, what's A? I'd have to say, do you mean capital A or do you mean small a? That's why if you say, what's A, I know you mean a side. If you wanted the angle, you would have said alpha. All right, so it just keeps things a little, a little simpler. All right, so anytime you solve a oblique triangle, you have to be given three things. Okay, and depending on what combination of things I give you, um, it changes how you solve it. Today, we're going to focus on the kinds of problems where you're going to use what's called the law of sines. Okay, and there's three types of triangles that you use the law of sines on. Okay, if I give you two angles and a side, you always use law of sines. Okay, but there's two different ways I could give you two angles and a side. I could give you two angles, and then I could give you the side that connects them. Okay? That's the side is between the two angles. Angle, side, angle. Okay. Or I could give you two angles and a side, but I don't give you the side that connects them. For example, in the triangle on the right, you've got 15 degrees, 100 degrees, 
and you've got another side, but it's not the side that's between the two angles. Right, so you might have seen these before when you did proofs in geometry, these three letters. Uh, we're, not, we're not doing proofs with them. We're just using these three letters to explain what kind of triangle we have. Great. Any questions on the difference between angle, side, angle, or side, angle, angle? Okay, you can also write it um, backwards. Some people write angle, angle, side. That's fine. Um, if you want to write ASA backwards, um, go for it. Okay, and the last type, last type of triangle we can have that we use law of sines for is side, side, angle. Uh, I prefer you write it in this order. It's just nicer. Okay, side, side, angle. And this is where you've got two sides and you've got an angle, just like in this diagram. The key is that the angle they give you is not between the two sides. All right, so they could have given me this one or they could have given me that one, but not the one at the top. Okay? If you have an angle between two sides, that's, um, that's totally different. Okay, we're not going to talk about that today. Right, so any question on that type? Okay, the first two are pretty straightforward. Okay, when we get to this one, um, we have to be careful. And we're going to spend um, probably the last part of class on this, and we're going to spend tomorrow on this one as well. Okay. well the top two are pretty straightforward. Those are straightforward. So to solve any of the three types of problems I, I just gave you, we're going to use law of sines. Now there are some other combinations of letters you can have. Okay? That's going to be a different law we learn on Wednesday. Does anyone have a guess um, what other law we're going to learn this week. We're going to learn law of signs today and tomorrow. What law you think we'll learn on Wednesday? Any guess here? Law of cosines? Yeah, it's a law of cosines. Okay. Law of cosines is going to be used to do everything we can't do with law of signs. You might be dying to know if there's a law of tangents. Um, yes, I've seen it in. Uh, a really old book, but um, I don't. We don't use it because we can do everything we need with law of sines and law of cosines. I'm not even sure what the law of tangents is really for. I've never used it, so we won't. We won't study that at all. All right. So I'm going to show you um, what the formula is for law of sines. And then after we get the formula, we're just going to make sure we write it down, uh, memorize it, so then we don't have to go through how to figure it out again. All right, so what I've drawn here is a triangle where I've labeled only two sides and two angles. Okay. I have A across from alpha, B across from beta. You're not going to need C or gamma for what I'm about to do. Next, I drew in an altitude, separating this big triangle into two other special triangles. Okay. By drawing in that altitude, I just created two, uh, what kind of <coughs> triangles? Two right triangles. Yeah. Are they exactly the same size? No. So this, it's not necessarily in the middle um, at all. Right. And let's um, let's call this the height. All right. What I'm going to do is look at this as two separate pictures. Okay, I'm, I'm going to cover up everything that's on the right. Okay. I just want to focus on the left triangle. Right. So I want to try to come up with a trig function that's going to involve h and b. Okay. We talked about um, the terms opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay. 
relative to alpha, what is side H? Is it opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Opposite. And what about B? That's the hypotenuse, because it would be across from the 90. <laughs> Does anybody remember what uh, trig function has opposite and hypotenuse in it? Yeah, sine. Good. So it's always sine of your angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. It, maybe h wasn't the best choice because h means height here. It doesn't mean hypotenuse. But. Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, and now my last step, I just want to get h by itself. So how would I move the b to the other side? But Kate, can you tell me how I'd get that B on the other side? By I mean multiply. Yeah, multiply. Good. Okay, so if you multiply it, it cancels out. And now we have an equation for the height. The height is B sine alpha. Okay, that's a formula for the height. Okay, just keep it off to the side. We'll come back to it in a minute. Any questions on how we got B sine alpha for the height? All right, so now I want to do the same thing. Um, this time I want to do it on the, on the right half. Okay, so cover up <coughs> what's on the left. And now I want to do everything from the perspective of beta. All right, so look at the side that's opposite beta. Um, Cody, what side is opposite beta? Uh, H. H. And what about my hypotenuse? A. A. And Becca, do you remember what um, trig function we use again that has opposite and hypotenuse in it? Sine. Yep. We use sine. This time it's sine beta equals, uh, Bailey, what's opposite beta? Height. Height. And adjacent, uh, hypotenuse? A. A. Okay, same thing I did last time. I want to get H by itself. So, Malin, how would I move that A to the other side? Mm -hmm. So just multiply each side by A. Okay, that's gone. And now my formula for H, it's A sine beta. Okay, any questions on that? So that's, that's a formula to find the height. The same height we just found earlier. Okay. Are these two formulas the same? Is what we'll call what's on the left box one, what's on the right box two. Does box one and box two look exactly the same? You think, Kelsey? No, they're not, they're not exactly the same, what's written in each box. But what are they both equal to? They're both equal to H. So what does that, what must that mean? If what's in box one equals H and what's in box two equals H, that has to mean something. It's kind of like if I said I had the same amount of money as John and I had the same amount of money as Sarah. There's something, I have the same amount as two other people. Something else you know. Katie? All right, so whether you use box one or box two, the answer comes out the same. So what does that mean about box one and box two? Yeah? They equal each other. So this equals this. Okay, it has to. They're both the same thing. All right, and the last thing I'm going to do is just a trick to um, rewrite it so it looks the way it does in the book. I want to divide each side by A times B. Okay. On the left side, what, what happens when, with the Bs? I have a B in the top and a B in the bottom. Yep. They cancel out. 
And what about on the right side? A's cancel out. And that's pretty much our law of sines. Sine of alpha divided by A equals sine of beta divided by B. Now, there's a, a third part to it. Okay, one more fraction. We didn't prove this part. But anybody think they know what the third fraction would be? If you follow, follow the pattern? <coughs> Yep, it is going to be over C. Anyone help him out with the name of that letter? Gamma. Gamma. Okay, we didn't prove this third part. Okay, and we're not, we're not going to. Okay, to prove the, the third part, you just have to draw your altitude in from a different side, from a different angle. Okay. Right, so that's the law of sines, okay, which I'll just abbreviate LOS. Okay. Whenever we use the law of sines, you never use all three fractions at the same time. You either use the first two parts, the last two parts, or the first part and the last part. Okay, so the point is you pick two parts at a time and you use them. Right, so especially when we're solving triangles, I think one of the most helpful things is to make a sketch. So then you can see you know, what, what's across from what. And then we'll organize everything in a table just like we did before. Now we can't use Pythagorean theorem. Okay? The reason, we don't have a 90. Okay? If you don't have a 90, you don't have a hypotenuse. Okay? To use Pythagorean theorem, you've got to have a hypotenuse. But there's another fact, somebody said it earlier about the angles. Um, what do all the angles still have to add up to? No, still add up to 180. Okay, so add up all your angles, it still totals 180. Okay, any questions on what the law of sines is? Just the equation, anything we can't read? in that box. Because next, we're going to practice um, using it. All right. All right, so here's our first, um, first triangle we'll try to solve. Alpha is 40, beta is 60, A is 4. First thing I did was I made a table. I put my three sides in one column, put my three angles in another column. I put boxes around everything I need to find. Now, after I make my table, uh, what else did I say it might be helpful to, to do? Wes, do you remember what else we want to do after we make a table? To try to um, try and sketch it. visualize it better. Yeah, we want to sketch it. Yeah. Okay, the reason we have to sketch it is because you can only use law of signs on three types of problems. If this isn't one of the three types of problems, um, then we can't solve it. All right, so let's sketch it and see what type it is. Okay, I'm going to put A there, put alpha across from it. Okay, I'll put B on the bottom. If I put B on the bottom, beta has to go across from it. And actually, I know beta, so let me fill that in. Beta is 60. I don't know C. And I don't know gamma. Again, this triangle is not to scale. 
right. What um, what kind of triangle is this one? Just naming it with the th with the three letters, the A's and S's. Yeah. Yep, it's angle, angle, side. Or you could say side, angle, angle. Same thing. Is is that one of the three types I listed earlier that you can do with law of sines? Let me think. Yep. Yeah. Yep, we can. All right, so now we'll start to solve it. All right, when you're using the law of sines, okay, you have to have a row in your table with everything in it. Okay, that's, that's another way to tell without a picture that this is law of sines. The top row has everything in it. Okay, so I'm definitely going to use that row. Okay, let's find the law of sines that has A and alpha in it, and let's, let's fill into that. It says sine of alpha divided by A. Right, so fill in alpha and fill in A. So I'm put sine of 40 divided by 4. Equals. Now, we don't want to use a row that's completely empty. Okay, if you had a row that's missing everything, you can't use it until you find something. Okay? We might be able to find something pretty easily, okay? and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, we also could have done it right away. Um, but since the second row already has something in it, let's find the part of law of sines that has B and beta. Okay? <coughs> Fill in what you can. Okay, so we have sine of alpha over A equals sine beta over B. Fill in beta and B in the second part. Right, so we've got, let's find where I was. Sine of 60 divided by B. Okay, now I'm going to solve this for B. Right, this is a proportion. Right, whenever you have a fraction equal to a fraction, um, how do we solve a proportion? Maybe remember the name of, of what you do? Yep. Cross yeah, you just cross multiply. Okay, so we'll cross multiply. You've got 4 sine 60, which at this point I don't care what it is, so I'm going to plug it in to the calculator in a second. Equals B sine 40. My last step, I, I really want to get B by itself, so this sine 40 has to go to the other side. Okay, Kylie, how would I move um, sine 40 to the other side? So right now it's multiplied by B. So how would you? What's the opposite of multiply? Divide. Okay, you're going to divide by sine 40. Sine 40. So that cancels out. And there's your answer for B. Okay, we need to type that in and then just, um, just round it off. All right, before, um, before I even type it in, what, what do you think I should double check on my calculator? <coughs> make sure I don't make a simple mistake. Yeah, make sure I'm in degrees. Every problem this week, um, is in degrees. Okay, so just set it to degrees and just leave it there all week. So 4 sine 60. And if I'm going to type it in all at once, you have to make sure you close your parenthesis and then divide by sine 40. If you don't close that first parenthesis, um, it'll come out wrong. Okay? All right, so we got... 5.389. Okay, it seems, uh, seems like kind of a small number, but again, all these sides in the triangle are pretty small, so that's, that's probably, probably good. Okay, and we're going to round everything to um, three places, okay, three decimal places. 
Notice, I didn't round as I went. The only time I rounded was the very last step. Okay? So I don't want you to define like 4 sine 60 rounded and then take that rounded answer, divide by sine 40, and then round that. Okay? Just round, if you can, one time per problem. Can we use it for that? Well, uh, can somebody else answer that? Might be something we have to find first to determine if we can do that. I'm not saying we can't, but I'm not saying I know enough information yet to answer your question. No All right, how do you know there's no right angle? Because um, gamma, you said gamma is how much? 70. 70? Okay, does everybody agree with that? Stephen, what do you what do you think it is? Yeah, I, I like the reasoning. That's correct. There is no right angle here. But if we add up forty and sixty, we get a hundred plus eighty more gives me my one eighty. All right. So now I can answer your question, Wes. The answer is no. We can't use Pythagorean theorem because we don't have a ninety. Because it's not ninety. Yep. If that did come out to ninety, then yes, we could have. Great. Right. So now. We're going to solve for C the same way we set it up to solve for A. Now I have a choice. I told you, you always have to use a row that has everything in it. Now the first row and the second row has everything. Which row do you think I should use to find C? Mason? Yep. Not only are the numbers easier, they were given, so we know they're right. Okay. So start it just like you did last time. Sine of 40 over 4. Equals, anybody tell me what's going to go on the other side? Sine of what over what? 80 over C. Yep, 80 over C. Now, what do I want to be very careful with because I'm using gamma. Why, why is using gamma a little um, tricky, a little risky? Yep? Yeah. It wasn't given to us. Right? So last week, I told you if something wasn't given, don't use it. This week, um, you can't do that. Okay, you're going to have to use things that you find to find other things. So what does that mean? If we got gamma wrong, what else is automatically going to come out wrong? C. C. Right? So if we had gamma wrong, C is automatically wrong. We could still get B right. So we could get the credit for that part, but we would get C wrong. Right? So be very careful um, when you calculate things. Okay? You have to use things that you find to find other things. Right, but 80 is correct. Okay, positive, that is the right answer. So we'll solve for C. And if you want to do the cross multiplying in your head, you can. So you're going to have 4 sine 80. And then you divide by sine 40. Okay. Any questions on how I, how I got that? Just cross multiplied in my head, and I divided each side by sine 40. If you want to show out all the work, you can also do that. That's fine. Right, now type it in and see what you get. Okay, before I type it in, though, I can guarantee you the answer is less than 9.389. Does anybody know how I figured that out? Why does this have to be less than 9.389? Right. Any two sides have to be, when you add them up, have to be bigger than the third. Okay. So this side can't be bigger than 9.389, but I also know it has to be bigger than 5.3. So I guarantee it's between 5.3 and 9.3. Um, how do I know C is going to be bigger than 5.3? Um, we don't have a hypotenuse here since we don't have a 90. How do I know C is the biggest side? Because mm -hmm. gamma is the biggest angle. Because gamma is the biggest angle. 
Okay? The biggest side is always across from the biggest angle. So if I get a number smaller than one of these two, something's wrong. Okay? I need to double check it. So when I go through a problem, those are a couple things I think of in my head so that if I get an answer that doesn't make sense, I can spot it um, right away. All right, so just type that in. For sine 80 divided by sine 40. 6.128, which is exactly what I thought it had to be between. Let me, um, let me show you what happens if you don't close the parenthesis. Okay, let's say you're just going through and you forget. Okay, what's bad about that is the calculator doesn't give you an error. It doesn't say it couldn't do it. It just says, here's an answer. Okay, so you might write that down and not even realize you didn't close the parenthesis. But I would recognize 3.2, 3.29. I know that's wrong right away looking at it because it has to be the biggest side. 3.2 would be the smallest side, okay? So the second way I type that in, that's wrong. Okay, any questions on that? All right, we're pretty much just gonna do one of each type today. Okay, so that's, that's the angle, angle side. Okay, second case. This one is angle, side, angle. And I already have the sketch done for you. So whenever you use law of signs, I said earlier you have to have a row that has everything in it. Looking at information I have in the table, right now, do I have a row with everything in it? What do you think, Melissa? Do we have a row with everything in it? No. Nope. We don't have a row with everything given, but can I find something that would give me a complete row? Yeah, we can find something. What, what can we find that would make the row complete? Yeah, yeah gamma. Okay, we can find gamma because we know two of the other angles. We can add it up and subtract from 180. Now, once we find gamma, we have to be very careful we get it right. Because not only are we going to use gamma to find B, we're going to use gamma to find A. So if we get gamma wrong, the whole, the whole thing's wrong. Okay. So what is gamma? How much? 65? Well, let's think. What do these two add up to? 45 and 40. 85. So if we take um, 180, and what do you think it is? Yeah. If we subtract 85 from it, we get 95. Right, so row C, that's going to be my key row for solving the problem. Okay, very important we get gamma right. Um, as far as what we find next, we can find A or we can find B. It doesn't matter. Okay, do it in any order we want. Let's, um, let's just do A. Natalie, could you give me my um, part of my proportion that we're going to put on the left? Uh, sine x over a. Sine of, what do you want to put? X, I mean 45. Yep, sine of 45 over, you said? A. A, yep. That's perfect. Okay, that's half my proportion. Since I had the variable on this side, I can't have any more letters. Okay, everything else we put down has to be numbers now. Right, so Courtney, can you tell me what, um, what I would put on the other side? Sine 
sine of what? 95. Yeah. So sine 95 over? Four. Yeah, 4, that's perfect. Yeah. Now just cross multiply. It's 4 sine 90, uh, 4 sine 45. Divided by sine 95. Yeah, I'll just type it in and see what we get. Any questions on the expression for A? Let's see what we get. Um, 4 sine 45 divided by sine 95. Right. So if I ran that to three decimal places, uh, Bailey, what would that round to? 2.839. Yeah, 2.839, good. Now, row A has everything in it. Okay, Stephen, should I use row A to solve for B? Yeah. Okay, why should I use row A? Because it's full. True, it is full. Um, do you have any other row that's full? C. C? So given the choice of, I say, if I said you could use either row C or row A, which one would you pick? Why? Why do you, what do you like about that one? It's easier to find the angle than it is to find the... What, yeah, what about this row is easier? Then row A. What do you, what, what's easier there? Look at the number in, for A. What do you get? What kind of number do you get for that? A decimal. Do you want to work with that? I don't either. Not if we don't have to. Look at the number you have for C. Is that a decimal? No. Okay, so the number numbers here are much nicer. Okay, so pick the pick the row that has the nice numbers, and if you can stick with stuff that was given. Well this time the ninety five wasn't given, I have to use it, but at least it's a nice number. Okay. Alright, so let's set it up um, to solve for B. Um, Sydney, could you tell me how I would set up um, just half of my proportion to solve for B? Yep, put sine 40 over B. I like that. We got the variable on the left. Everything else we plug in has to be numbers. Right, so Nick, what, um, what would I put on the right-hand side? You want to use that row? No. no. We don't want to use that row. What row do we want to use? So we're going to put sine of, I don't know what the other one is. 95 over? 4. Yeah. Sine 95 over 4. Okay, and when I get B by itself, Somebody tell me what B will come out. You don't have to give me the decimal, but just tell me what, what times what divided by what. Yeah? Four times times what? Four. Yeah, it's a cross product. Yeah. So what, what else goes in the top? Four what? Is it sine 40? Yep. And then what goes in the bottom? Okay, you'd have, if you wrote it out that way, you'd have B sine 95, but then you'd have to divide by sine 95. Yeah. 
and that's what you get when you get B by itself. <laughs> Because you'd have 4 sine 40 equals B times sine 95. Yeah. Okay, before I even type it in, can somebody tell me what do I know about B? Just based on what's in that table. It's less than C. It is true. It is less than C. Anybody tell me anything even more specific? It has to be less than, I mean more than 6.8. It has to be bigger than 6.8? It does have to be less than 6.8, but Natalie said something even, even more specific. She said it has to be less than C, and I agree with that. It has to be less than A. Okay. B is across from the smallest angle. It has to be the smallest side. So B has to be less than 2.8. Okay, so it's going to be pretty small. Okay. But it's not that much smaller than alpha. Okay, alpha and beta are pretty close. So A and B are going to be pretty close, except B is a little, little smaller. Okay, so let's type it in. And if I don't get something that's smaller than 2.8, um, I know I typed something in wrong. 4 sine 40 uh, divided by sine 95. It's a 2.581. Okay, that looks, looks good. Now, can I check it with Pythagorean theorem? Could I do a squared plus b squared to see if it equals c squared? No. No. How come? It's not a 90. Okay, it would be close because this is this is almost 90, but it wouldn't it wouldn't work. Okay, so any questions on angle side angle? All right, so the last type, side angle angle. I'm sorry, side side angle. So when you did um, proofs in geometry, this was never something you would write. Okay, and usually some kind of joke about it, say you remember or something. But the idea is this was never something you wrote. Okay, the first angle side angle, that's something you use. Angle angle side, that's that's something you would have used, but not this one. Okay, the reason is when you do a, a side side angle problem, you could have one solution. Okay, and it works out just like the last two, it's just a normal problem. You could have two solutions, okay, which isn't really harder, but it takes longer. Okay? You have to do everything twice. Or the best case, if you're trying to get it done quickly, is you end up with no solution. Okay, with no solution, you realize basically at your first calculation, this problem can't be done, and then you can stop. Okay, so side side angle is the only time you have to worry about zero, one, or two solutions. This never happens anywhere else. Just right on this type. Okay, it doesn't happen on the first two types we did. It's not going to happen when we learn law of cosines later in the week. This is the only time it happens. Right, so that's pretty much all I need to tell you. Okay, we'll just start going through the problem. And when we get to a point where something's different, I think you'll, you'll probably recognize it. Okay, so zero, one, or two solutions. Okay, same problem you just had up above. I just put it, put it in a table. Gave myself a little bit of space to do the, do the workout. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Um, Carter, do I have a row um, with everything in it? A. Yep. So I'm definitely going to use row A. So we'll start with that. Sine of alpha over A. Now, last problem we solved, you had a choice. I said you can find A first or you could find B first. You don't have a choice this time. What do I have to solve for next? And why? Maybe because we can't have another variable. We can use two. So you said solve for solve for B? So B we know is two. But did you mean something else? B is two. We have B. We have A, we have B, and we have alpha. Anybody have any thoughts about what else we want to solve for? So not, not B. Yeah, beta. We want to solve for beta. Why, um, why, why not solve for C or gamma? You don't have anything. Okay? If you use a row that's missing everything, you're going to have two letters. <coughs> okay? If you set up an equation with two letters, um, good luck. You're not going to be able to solve it. All right? So you have, to, you have to solve for beta. Okay, so let's, um, let's set it up and see what happens. So it's sine of beta over B. Okay, does anybody recognize what's um, different at this step? Something just happened here that hasn't happened in anything we've done so far today. All right, so we've got both of our sides or numbers. Where, where's our variable? It's in the top. It's in the sine function. Okay, We've seen this. It's not something we haven't seen before, but we haven't seen it today. Right, so I'm still going to cross multiply. Again, 2 sine 40 equals 3 sine beta. And my goal eventually is just to get beta by itself. Uh, so John, what would I do next? Divide by, I, I like the idea of dividing. I just don't like the number. Well, one by two and then one by three. Uh, careful. Whatever you do, you have to do it the same on both sides. So if you pick a number, we've got to stick with that number on both sides. Uh, three, so you can get some yeah. beta. If we divide each side by three, we can at least get sine beta by itself. We get rid of that three. Now I have 2 sine 40 over 3 equals sine beta. Now I want to get rid of sine. Okay? I just want to have beta. Do you want to remember how we can cancel out sine? Yep. Inverse sine. Inverse sine. Very good. So we're going to take the inverse sine of what's on the left. So that all cancels out. I'm sorry, on the right and also on the left. And that is our answer for beta. If I try to plug this in and the calculator gives me back an error, then I know this is a no solution problem or I type something in wrong. If I type it in and I get a number, it's definitely not no solution. means there is a solution. So let's do inverse sine. 2 sine 40. Okay. And then, again, make sure you close the parenthesis for your sine function. Divide it by 3. Close your parenthesis again for your inverse sine. All right. 
and I got 25.374. All right, so this is, this is not the case where we get no solution. I just got an answer, 25.374. Okay, and that's verbatim. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it higher up in the box, just in case there's a second answer. And if there is, I'll write it down below. All right, so let me show you how you use that number to see if there is a second answer. All right, so in a minute, I'll go back up and I'll, I'll do the arithmetic, but let me just explain it first. If there's a second answer, the way you find it, take what we just got for beta, 25 point something, 374, three, and subtract it from 180. Okay, let's do that first. Okay, I'm gonna take 180 minus the answer that I just got. In this case, I'm solving for beta. You might be solving for alpha or gamma. It just depends on what they give you. If there's a second answer, that's what it is. I'm not saying it works. I have to figure out if that answer makes sense. Okay, but if there's a second answer to that problem, that's what it is. 154.626. I'm just going to write it off to the side. What, um, what am I restricted by with all the angles? What, what do I have to make sure that I follow? They all have to add up to 180. Okay, I can't go above 180. So the next step is to see if it's possible to fit the angle we just found. That's the 154.626. And the given angle. Okay, if you remember back, there was an angle that was given. See if they would fit in the same triangle. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to look at what was given. I'm going to look at the number I just calculated. And I'm going to see if they would fit. Okay, so I'll, sc I'll scroll back to it in a second. But let's, let's check what the given was. What angle was given here? Yep, 40 degrees. Okay. If there's a second answer, I'm saying it's 154.626. Would that work? No. no. This angle is too big to fit with what was given. This adds up to 194. Okay. Since this angle is too big, we're not going to use it. Now, if the second answer had come out to like 110, then that would have worked. You could fit 110 and a 40 in the same triangle. But 154.626 is too big. So now I go through just in writing what we just said. Okay. So there's your second answer. You were given a 40 degree angle to start. If you add the given to the second answer, it's greater than 180. It's too big. Okay, it won't always be too big. Sometimes it'll be too big, like in this one. Sometimes it won't. Okay, today, we're not going to look at one where it works. Okay, we'll save that part for tomorrow. Okay, so any questions on how we found the possible second answer and then why we said it's too big? Ignore it. It doesn't work. All right, so now once we ruled out that it's, it's too big, now we just finish this like a normal problem. Okay, we've got beta. Um, what can I find next now that I have alpha and beta? Gamma. I'm sorry, we have alpha, beta, yeah, gamma. Right, we can find gamma. Right, they all have to add up to 180. So take, add alpha and beta. 65.374 and subtract it from 180. Okay, so gamma is 114.626. Now I finally have a piece of information in that last row. 
and knowing gamma will help me to find the last thing, which is C. All right, so to find C, um, definitely have to use gamma. So let's set that up. So sine. 114626 over C. And now just pick a row that's complete. Right, Stephen, what, what row do you want to pick? Um, first row or second row? First row. First row, how come? Uh, because it's easy numbers to work with. Easy numbers to work with, good answer. Okay. Sine of 40 divided by 3. Put that on the other side. Okay, just cross multiply like we've done before, and, uh, and we're done. So it's going to be 3 sine 114.626 divided by sine 40. Okay, and that's. That's our answer for C. Any questions on that? Anyone need me to type that in to see the decimal? OK. All right, so that's, that's law of signs. We went through one of, um, one of each type. Um, tomorrow, we're going to focus on just this type. And we're going to look at it when we have no solution and two solutions. Okay, so we'll do two of those, and then I think we'll do um, two word problems. Okay. Okay, so the homework um, in your book okay, on 266, it's all odds uh, 9 to 13, 17 to 21, and 25.